Welcome to The Strack House, a show about inspiring women making change. I'm your host, Sarah Strackhouse. Join us to hear their incredible stories. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us. We're so excited to bring on someone who was actually on American Idol. She was a top 100 contestant in season four, that's 2005. And we thought with just everything going on right now, having her on would be so inspirational, bring some happiness and light. Brianna Raylis, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, I'm super excited to be here and Sarah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. And like I said, it's just so nice to kind of see your smiling face. Just like I said, with everything going on, um, I want to hear a li little bit about how you got into music and then how you actually got onto American Idol. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I have been singing my entire life. I did start very young. I, you know, I always say like I started third grade talent show singing Deb Debbie Gibson out of the blue with my little, you know, leather uh, skirt and my permed hair and whatnot that just kind of tells you how old I am um, <laughs> and I joined a local community theater here in Dallas called the Repertory Company Theater at the time it was the Richardson Children's Theater and I did commercial I'm sorry I did um, community theater and musical theater my whole like youth so when I was growing up there weren't music schools on every corner so my avenue to pursuing music and to growing as a performing artist was through theater and so that really led me, uh, I did, let's see, I did Mickey Mouse Club when I was in seventh grade. I auditioned for that and was a top 10 Dallas finalist uh, next to Jessica Simpson and um, didn't make the cut there because I was a year too old. They were looking for um, 12 years old and like between 10 and 12 and I was 13 at the time. And then I just kept going. I kept doing musical theater all the way through high school and major I, I that got me to Pepperdine University as a as a theater major and um, that was really the kind of the backbone or the background on me as it pertains to singing I did like a I also did like a lot of um, national anthem um, things so I, I remember performing for um, SMU for college basketball games and for the Dallas Mavericks when I was in high school so really early on I was just kind of jumping in there and looking at every opportunity I could get you know get involved in yeah, absolutely. So then what was that journey like once you were auditioning and on American Idol? Tell us a little bit about that. So after uh, I graduated from Pepperdine, I was really burnt out on musical theater. And I realized that music was the true first passion, the true love. So being in Los Angeles, you know, I thought, well, I'm here. Let's do this. And I, at the time, reality TV was just kicking off a couple seasons prior Kelly Clarkson had one and I decided to go for it. So I actually auditioned about three different times prior to getting my uh, golden ticket, as I like to say, on American Idol. And it was, uh, it was really crazy at the time. That was back in the days where people lined up cattle, co uh, cattle we call it cattle call style, or you know, literally like thousands of people per place. So when I was in Las Vegas, I believe there was about 10,000 people auditioning, or 10, or 10 to 12,000 literally wrapping around the stadiums. And we had to get there really early. We would like kind of camp out. We would probably get there like 3 a.m. And there was still lines from people who were there previously. Wow. And we would just camp out, hang out. And it was like that hurry up and wait thing where you, you kind of hustle inside and then you get your seat and then you wait all day to then audition. I mean, it, it was just a wild experience. Um, but when I finally got the yes, it was a really interesting story. The person who auditioned, who I auditioned for, the producer I auditioned for in Las Vegas, who gave me the no and who said, oh, you're so close. She had me sing like four different songs. And I was like, come on, give me a chance. Uh, she saw me in San Francisco at the callback. So I had, it was like the third days of callbacks. It's the day that you actually go in front of the celebrity judges yeah at the time it was randy paula and simon and she saw me she saw my because i wore these lime green pants and she saw my lime green pants and she says lime green pants i remember you were you in las vegas and i said yes she goes congratulations she said don't let me down she said don't disappoint me i go i will I oh won't. how so special it was it's a really um a really cool story i actually i actually talk about that story um and my first book, which, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about in a little bit, but it, it, I always share that because when people audition and it's not just auditioning, 
it's interviewing, it's, you know, whatever that is, the type of, when you have an opportunity to make an impression, if you're wearing something memorable, or if you are, you know, even if your personality is memorable, whatever that might be, like, keep, keep in mind that that's going to make an impression that, that will pay off later down the road. And you have no idea when that might happen. But, you know, when you, when you create impressions with people, you never know down the road when that can benefit you. Yeah, absolutely. You say something memorable and you just stick out to that person. That's absolutely, so yeah. cool. So then what was it like? Did, so you actually sang in front of the celebrity judges? Yes. Oh my yes. gosh. I would have been so nervous to stand up there in front of Simon. What was that like? Well, first of all, he's <laughs> super cute in person. I <laughs> underestimated how cute he was. And I was like early 20s and I still thought he was cute. Um, so that was amazing. And at the time they also would put celebrity. So they would have Randy, Paula and Simon, but they'd also put like a celebrity singer in there as well. And so for that particular, um, location, uh, Brandy, who's a pop star, it was real big at the time. Brandy oh, yeah. was the celebrity judge. And I actually, um, could hear her say when I, or when I was leaving after I got my golden ticket, my maiden name is Fideli. So she goes, Brianna Fideli. Wow that name even said that sounds famous like that name even sounds famous Brianna Fideli and I'm like what the heck like, I can't believe Brandy just <laughs> that is awesome but that is too it, cool it was really amazing to sing in front of them and I love that I was a part of kind of like that OG you know era of American Idol yeah so then uh, uh, that is so cool that must have been so much fun and like you said the OG American Idol I mean now we're they're in what like season 20 or something Let's see. I want to say hmm, 17 or 18. 18? Maybe okay. it's 20. Maybe it's 24. Go ahead. I, I mean, I, it can't be. I have no idea at this point. <laughs> I can't keep up. I, I mean, I literally had a, I had a client on last season, and I should know what season they're on. But, yeah, it's hard to keep up. Yeah. Well, tell, so tell me a little bit about that. Tell me a little bit about kind of what you're doing now. And uh, maybe even actually before we get into that, I know you kind of transitioned once you had um, your first baby. Um, and your life kind of took this shift into an entrepreneurial mindset and, and lifestyle. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. So. I got on the show and it was a great experience. I'm so thankful I had it. It ended way too soon for me though, of course. And this happens with so many people. And what I always like to share is that I really thought that when that show was over, that that was my last chance. That was an ending, not a beginning. Looking back now, I always can, can share or see that, whoa, 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 that was actually the catalyst that showed me that I could continue creating a career in music for myself. And it, it's gonna look different than maybe what I in, imagined or what I envisioned. But ultimately that was the, the beginning point that, that really showed me I could continue moving forward with music. And so shortly after American Idol, I became pregnant with uh, my husband and I became pregnant. Well, he didn't, but I did <laughs> with our first daughter. And um, yes, as soon as I had the baby, I, I really thought, A, I thought my music career was over because now I'm a mom and who's gonna wanna see a mom, you know, performing on stage? Like that's so not uh, sexy, right? Like whatever, you know, like that was my mindset at the time. Sure. Which clearly now, and look, you know, this was 15 years ago. Now we've got cool moms like Pink and, you know, Lady A and or who, you know, all these different people. We've got all these different incredible moms who are killing it in the music industry. Well, and I and think that the other thing about that too is like these shows like American Idol, The Voice, like all these give opportunities to people who, um, like, you, like you were saying, might be on that second chance. So uh, yeah, for sure, that door's never closed. That's right, that's right. So I, um, I did take a little break from music I was trying to transition into motherhood and it was really hard because I, I really did believe at the time that I couldn't do both. Mm -hmm. And um, I also thought, well, now that I'm a mom, we're probably gonna, we were living at, in LA at the time. We relocated to my hometown of Dallas, which I love, I love my hometown. But then I really thought, well, I'm not in LA anymore. Now I really can't do music. and. Thank goodness for this incredible shift that's happened in the industry and because of the World Wide Web, we can do music 
and, and really any industry from anywhere. And COVID has really shown that to on an accelerated level that we can work from home or work from wherever, right? We can be remote from wherever and be incredibly successful and uh, efficient in our jobs. Yeah, like this studio. So, this um, studio is from home. Yeah. The green screen. <laughs> Perfect example. Yeah. I mean, it's really, it's a really incredible example of that. So um, I, I really decided after, thank God, after a conversation that I had with my husband, it had been about two years. My, my daughter was around two. We were on vacation for a, a family wedding. And he just said, Brie, listen, you are going to make myself crazy. You're going to make yourself crazy uh, if you don't continue doing music in some form or fashion, whether it's performing, singing, songwriting, whatever it is, you have to get back into it. Um, yeah, or you're going you're gonna to suffer. And I was. I was really suffering. And those around me, they were suffering as well. So I appreciate that encouragement from my husband at the time. And that really changed it all for me. From there, I literally booked a gig at the House of Blues a month or so later, met, met a ton of musicians, started connecting with musicians in Dallas, met my producer. His name is Adam Pickerel. He and I are actually jumping in studio next week, so I'm super pumped about that. And, um, you know, it, it was the beginning. It, uh, another beginning, right? So yeah. it, it's like those stepping stones. We talk about that journey. And I always say, you know, every career is a long game, especially – the music industry, I mean, or entertainment industry. You just, you just have to keep plugging away and not giving up because there's always something that's going to be revealed uh, up ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And then even up ahead, you're talking about, um, you, you guys actually own a restaurant now and you kind of made that shift into that entrepreneurial world. Tell me a little bit about how you became a restaurateur and what that's been, what what has that been like? Because I grew up in the rent restaurant industry. My parents had a restaurant growing up. And I'm, I mean, I know you eat, breathe, sleep the, uh, the restaurant. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So yes, uh, my husband is the owner, well, we own Victor Hugo's restaurant in Oak Cliff. And Victor Hugo's is six years old. And this is really Victor's dream child. And he's, oh, we came to Dallas with the intention of opening a restaurant. And uh, it, we finally had the opportunity to do that back in, oh, what was it, 10, 2010, I guess? No, 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 that's not right, 2014. Yes, so September of 2014, we opened VH. And yeah, we're celebrating six years and it is wild. It is a crazy journey. And it's been very interesting because I quit my full-time job a few months before we got the keys to the restaurant, not realizing, because the, the opportunity came up very quickly. So. Literally, I, we both ended up going from two cush 401k, you know, salary jobs within three months, unemployed entrepreneurs, like it was just like overnight crash course into just, you know, welcome, <laughs> you're officially in business for yourself. So yeah, I always tell people if I would have known that, I, I mean, I thought I was quitting my job to stay at home with the kids and become a vocal coach. That's what I thought I was doing back in, I guess, 2000 and, uh, yeah, 13. Back in 2013, that's what I thought I was doing. And then three months later, Victor got the opportunity, which he jumped at, and, you know, we opened our first restaurant within a few months. Like, it happened very, very quickly. And it really gave me this, like I said, crash course into being an entrepreneur. I had to learn many new skills as far as I became the accountant for the restaurant. I, die, I dove straight into the full like scale of the marketing and the social media. And I was sort of dabbling in social media at the time, but not to the extent, like I'm training people in social media now. So it just shows you, you know, that shift that took place. But the, the entrepreneurial sort of foundations that I received learning these skills is also what, you know, became a catalyst for my own business inside the music industry as a a consultant, a strategy consultant for performing artists. So I get to like take all my background, sort of that real world entrepreneurial, you know, foot to the ground type of stuff and, and give it to my clients in different ways. So the, the, the background, the experience has been really interesting, really, really interesting. And, and it's hard. It's yeah. restaurant, especially right now, the restaurant industry is suffering. There are a lot of restaurants that will not come back. Yeah. We are, we are hanging on. We're a small family owned business, family owned restaurant, and we're hanging on. And 
it's it's been it's been tough definitely but you know we're just got our fists up you know we're, we're ready to go yeah fighting through everything and I feel That's like right. I mean being an entrepreneur being a mom business owner restaurant owner I feel like that that world is so hard um, to balance everything and on top of that with COVID and on top of that you're also a best-selling author can you tell us a little bit about your first book um, as well as your second one now absolutely so I published my first book, Performing Artist Pathway, which is available on Amazon. By the way, I'm like looking to see, do I have it? It's somewhere in my house. <laughs> um, I published that three years ago this month. Oh my gosh, happy anniversary, Performing Artist Pathway. It's amazing. And that really opened the door for me to launch my consulting company. And I started, once I wrote that book, this was all about navigating the highs and lows of your music journey. So. You know, I, I felt like there was a ton of books that really talked about how to sing or how to play guitar or how to, you know, you know, play an instrument, but no one spoke to the real life stuff you go through as an artist, as a performing artist. Um, and there's also a ton of practical advice in there from networking to auditioning to uh, working with producers, things like that. Uh, and yeah. it really just died. Like I said, it dives into how to navigate those highs and lows. And it gave me an opportunity to start speaking at music festivals, working with independent artists inside their music businesses so that I can, I can show them how to create sustainability in their music careers. And so that was the beginning for me. And then uh, two months ago, I launched my second book, which is the bestseller. And it's called, and I have that book, Make Reality TV Your Reality. And I love the back. It's like, it's just so soft and wonderful. So you have to get that too. That's on Amazon. And if you're in Dallas, it is at Barnes and Noble in Dallas. So you can check it out either at Barnes and Noble or Amazon. And this one is all about crushing your reality singing show audition and igniting your music career. So the second book, which I am super excited about because especially with COVID, look, artists don't have a whole lot of performance opportunities these days. And unfortunately, a lot of the small venues, they're saying 90% 90, 90 of these small local venues will not return. If they do, it's going to be a long time. Tours, you know, tours are on hold for at least a year or two. So the performance opportunities are low, which is why I'm encouraging a lot of artists to at least consider the platform of a reality singing show, like American Idol, like uh, The Voice or America's Eve Got, Got Talent even. Yeah, because um, there it's an opportunity to get your message and your music in front of millions of brand new ears and eyes. And so many artists, I don't want to say they they just they kind of poo poo it like they they're like, no, that's not for real artists or not for real, you know. And ultimately, I just truly believe that you have a message, you have a voice. And why not? Like, what else are you going to do? right now like what just, do you have to lose someone saying no yeah. then you're not not worse off than you are now <laughs> absolutely so this book takes you through the beginning stages the mindset the preparation as you're actually preparing your audition as you're choosing your songs as you're crafting your story it takes you through the actual performance part how to really get that chair turn how to get that golden ticket and then lastly the third component of the book is all about when you get onto the show how do you leverage the platform how do you set yourself up to, for example, do you have an email list? Are you discoverable on social media? How are you going to connect with all these, these thousands of brand new fans that are now following you on social media long after the show is over? So really setting you up for success to truly leverage the platform as a springboard for your music career. You know, it's so true because you see all these people who come off of reality TV and they just get so many followers and so much interaction, like you were saying, you know, something like The Bachelor, Bachelorette, you know, someone, uh, you know, contestants on these shows. And really that's your chance to kind of utilize it and make a business out of it. So, I mean, you're so right. And I know that you're actually a reality TV music coach. You're an online course creator. Um, you're also, um, a performing artist consultant now. So you're doing a little bit of everything. You know, what is your favorite part of being an entrepreneur? I love making a difference in others' lives. I love seeing the connections happening for my clients when 
I'm sharing something that for me seems like, yeah, of course, it's a no brainer. But for them, it's either brand new or it's been so overwhelming and so frustrating for so long. And then I can take them to a place where it's like, oh, that's how I can do it and not like lose my mind every day. You know, I love that, like those moments. Those are really powerful. And I'm super passionate about being the mentor that I never had. You know, I didn't have someone telling me, look, you want to create a career for yourself that's sustainable in music? No problem. This is what we're going to do. We're going to create a plan. We're going to do these steps. Like, because everybody's vision of success is different. So I believe that there is no cookie cutter way for all of this. So individually, we look at the artist or we look at the creative because I do work with a lot of creative entrepreneurs as well. And we look, okay, well, where are we headed? What are we trying to accomplish here? And we create a plan that's specific to them and to, to their desires, their needs, et cetera. So I, I just, I love working with others. I love helping others. And when it comes to reality TV shows, I know that there are so many artists who go onto these shows and they have no idea what to expect and they lose a massive, massive opportunity to A, network, to B, capture, like capture leads ultimately. Like when they're getting all of these new followers, they have an, a very, very like slim amount of time where they can actually engage with them and invite them along for the journey. Like I said, after the show is over. So I, I hate to see that. And I hate to see when artists go on these shows and they, they miss that opportunity. So if I can kind of get in there with them and even through the book, as even if it's not working one-on-one -on -one with me, which obviously, of course, that would be the best case scenario, but all of this is inside my book too. So they can start there and they can really get this preparation and confidence moving into this situation so that they, they know what to expect and, and ultimately just do the best that they possibly can. Yeah. I love that. I love that. That's so inspirational for people to hear and so nice, especially for those who are maybe just entering the industry or those who are in the industry trying to look for a second chance. So I'm sure they're, you know, they're appreciating hearing that um, and knowing that they're, you know, they have a nice future. They have, they can make something happen from at any opportunity. I love that. Well, I have kind of one more question for you. Um, it seems that you've really struck a really nice balance. Um, so my question, is do you have any advice for those who are in the music industry not in the music industry they're just a mom trying to balance kids family work life everything um, what advice do you have for that person trying to navigate that journey absolutely so I always say now for the mom for example I always say you have to have something outside of your your spouse or partner and your children that is yours and yours alone, something you can take ownership in, but it has to be something that you're hungry for. Otherwise you're not going to make the time. You know, we always, we make time for the things that are important to us. So if for anyone out there that let's say even the musician, you know, a lot of us, a lot of musicians, a lot of artists out there, you have to have nine to five jobs to pay the bills. And then you fit in your art or your music on the weekends or whatever that is. But there is time that you can carve out to make that happen for yourself. So I, I would just say life, life, is, um, life is short, yes. But I always say, think about five years from now or 10 years from now. How are you going to feel five or 10 years from now if you haven't done that thing, right? Are you, is it going to hurt? You know, like, is it gonna? Are you make gonna you regret? Bad? Yeah. Is it gonna? What, how are you gonna feel if you don't do that thing that's like in you, the thing that you know is so important to you, whatever that might be, whatever whatever desire has been laid on your heart, and uh, it's important that you tune in. You know, take slow down and tune in and like really identify like, well, what what is that thing or what do I want? Yeah. Because if you are running, 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 which we're all very busy you are not going to hear it. You are not going to be able to listen. So take the time, you know, every morning when I wake up, I have my daily success ritual. I have my daily morning routine. I am way more efficient and successful when I carve out time to wake up early and get my morning routine in. 
between working out and praying, meditating, journaling, whatever it is, you know, everyone looks different. Every, whatever every fills your cup. Looks different. Yeah, whatever that is for you. But slowing down long enough to really, to really tune in and, and sort out exactly what it is that you want to do and, and then be brave and freaking do it. Like, wh- what are you waiting for? Let's go. That's awesome. That is awesome. If people want to find out more about you, what's the best way to do it? Uh, website, social media handles? Yes, thank you. So my website is briannarellasmusic.com, B-R-I-A-N-N-A-R-U-E-L-A-S music.com. And they can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Brianna Rellas Music. And of course, you can get Make Reality TV Your Reality and Performing Artist Pathway on Amazon. Awesome. And of course, we'll put all of those links and everything like that in the captions as well. Brianna, thank you so much for coming yeah. on. I mean, yours is such a nice message of hope and inspiration right now. I think something the country needs. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Well, look, I appreciate you having me and I, um, I would love to, you know, help you, support you in any way. I can't wait to see everything that you're doing too. I'm really excited to be connected with you now. And um, I really appreciate you having me today. Me too. Me too. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we'll have to have you back on uh, soon for sure. Would love it. Would love it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, thank you everyone so much for joining us. Of course, we have a lot of nether, a lot of wonderful guests here in the interim period. Brianna was amazing. And like I said, we'll make sure that all of her information is in the captions. And of course, you can follow us on thestraghouse.com or on all of your streaming platforms at The Strack House on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as all of your streaming platforms. And we'll see you next time. If you'd like to nominate an inspiring woman, email me at sarahstrackhouse at gmail.com. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.